Now on the Marijuana Solution, Robert Roundtree speaks with Dr. Barry Gordon of VeniceCare.com. Dr. Gordon is a 32-year emergency medicine doctor who shares his do-no-harm philosophy of cannabis therapy. He also explains how cannabis, used as a legal medicine, is improving the lives of many patients in his practice. So the practice has been fantastic, both from the volume of patients that we've seen, which is no big surprise because of how many people have been waiting for constitutional amendment to, you know, uh, be enacted. And more so, really, just from the type of patients that we're seeing, just a very satisfying practice by 32-year uh, emergency medicine career was satisfying, of course. And I knew that there was going to be a level of satisfaction in doing this as well. But I'll be honest with you, just every single patient comes with completely legitimate needs, a unique story, and really as a physician that just strongly believes in the positivity of the medical cannabis program, it's just been far beyond my expectations. And I think not just mine, but for Patrick uh, DeLuca, my executive director, and Patty as well, uh, who's my wife, and, you know, assist in the office. All three of us just every day come here completely charged up by the patients that we're caring for. It's great. Yeah, you know, we've been, we received similar feedback, um, a lot of really unique stories, um, you know, some of them obviously heart-wrenching, and it's just great to be able to finally provide a different type of care for some people that may be interested in it, and it's definitely affecting people in a positive way. Um, I, I'm sure you were overwhelmed, like you were saying. Um, did you notice a significant surge? What day did you open your practice? Let me ask you that first. Well, you know, I think the thing from the, from the practice side, the, the great thing about it is that as a classically trained American physician, if the do no harm concept is what the best part of it is, is that literally patients come in on one medicine or ten medicines, right? The yeah. safety profile of the cannabis product is so fantastic that when you don't have drug-drug interactions, when you don't have drug levels raised, when you have a very reliable side effect profile, and quite frankly, a negative death profile, right, as compared yeah. to the opiates, of course, which we know people are still dying in the streets of opioid overdoses, the complications of the opioids, everything. You know, I, I love the new commercial for the opioid-induced constipation, right, which is basically oh, yeah. just yeah, which is basically just chasing one symptom with another pill, right? So the the do no harm concept is the classically trained American physician that I am is the most exciting because I know that the patients that are coming to me looking for a different means of pain or not pain relief at all, but symptom relief is important to know because you know pain is not one of the in qualifying conditions, and that'll be an important part of the conversation that we can have a little bit later. We need to make sure that we maintain the integrity of the state constitutional amendment with the similar like debilitating conditions tag at the end of the eight conditions so that people that have debilitating illnesses uh, and the side effect of the debilitating illnesses of anxiety, depression, sleep disorder, uh, things of that nature can still be included, right, if the state mm -hmm. starts to get too restrictive on the other associated type conditions, then that may be a big impairment towards a lot of patients who are very deserving being enrolled into the program. So we're Absolutely. very, very concerned right now that the uh, constitutional amendment gets honored by the spirit of the amendment. Um, that brings up another question. There are some proposed rules, and it looks like they are trying to circumvent the patient-doctor relationship because uh, it's been reported that the Florida Medical Board is going to be the determining entity on the additional conditions. What, we what got, do you think about we got that? that same, we got that same notice. We have attorneys on retainer that look at every, that look at every single thing that we get. What we know is that these are preliminary rules that somehow were written in October. 
We feel that they are absolutely contrary to the spirit of the amendment. We are already organizing a uh, to go to Tampa for, I think, what is it, Patrick, if I were a right session. Uh, we have patients also that want to go up with us. We plan on right from the get-go making sure that this is not acceptable, that it does not follow the spirit of the amendment. We don't know where these preliminary rules came from. The, 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 um, the medical board determining the conditions surely was not in the spirit of how the amendment was written, so we're not quite sure where that came from. But to be very strong in our feelings, we will be there. We will be fighting and advocating for our patients to make sure that this remains a doctor-patient decision. And I say it from this angle, too. The, the, the Florida program, as you know, has the 90-day relationship, right, that needs to be established. As I explain to everybody, the importance of that 90-day relationship is the appropriate meet and greet, the review of the history, the physical exam of the patient, the discussion with the patient, because the second thing is very important, too, upon the other debilitating conditions. The second tag phrase is that based upon the conversation with you and your clinician, that the medical cannabis product, right, has a better risk-benefit right. ratio for you personally based upon your and your doctor's discussion than other alternatives, right? So Absolutely. why have the 90-day relationship requirement if you're not going to allow for that physician discretion? If it's just going to be a rubber stamp for those people that have one of the magical eight, right, then what are you waiting yeah. 90 days for? So to me, I'm not sure where the new um, uh, medical board type of wording came from. To me, it's just what I like to call the 29 percenters, um, continuing yeah. to look for ways to uh, obstruct and get in the way of compassionate care. And we're yeah. not going to stand for it um, to the extent of being out there immediately at the Rules Committee level to say that this is not the spirit of the amendment. And as a clinician, um, I don't have an understanding of, of, of where this came from. Yeah, it, it's disappointing. Um, but like you said, they're just proposed rules. If we can organize enough people, and the event that he is speaking of for the people that will be listening to this is February 8th at the Florida Department of Health, the Tampa Branch Laboratory, right. and that's going to be at 3602 Spectrum Boulevard, Tampa, Florida, 33612 from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Um, we'll be coming down that. there as well. Good, good. Yeah. You know, I look forward to everybody who's concerned being there. You know, our website, which is venicecare.com, and our Facebook page, Compassionate Cannabis Clinic of Venice, also will have all of that information and means to consult uh, and uh, write to legislators and otherwise. And, yeah, we need a groundswell early on to um, combat this. Do you have any idea from whence that wording came? Has there been an indication where that's kind of bubbled up from? Uh, do you guys have any insights on that? Um, I don't. I do have some contacts with the Department of Health that I'll be talking to later today, and if I get any information, I'll, I'll definitely disseminate it to everybody. I personally think if I just had to guess it, uh, we have an attorney running the medical department known as the Office of Compassionate Use. Of course. Um, they're probably operating under a significant abundance of caution. And then we have the Florida Medical Board, which I have a feeling has been instrumental in a lot of this. As uh, you know, they came out over the past year kind of against medical marijuana, um, although the physician who's in charge of the Florida Board of Medicine actually has been recommending under Amendment 2 since January 3rd. Hmm. So... There's a lot, a, a lot of 
angles that I could go down rabbit holes with, you know, but it, it seems suspicious yeah. to me that rules were composed before you even knew for sure that an amendment had been voted in. That seems like an enormous waste of taxpayer resources to be implementing rules based on some arbitrary poll that's out there that may say it's going to pass. Um, and especially yeah, in, yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, it, it's quite interesting. You know, I actually had a wonderful conversation yesterday with State Senator Jeff Brandis, mm -hmm. and uh, we we discussed a whole lot of things. He was extremely encouraging. Of course, he's been a strong proponent of the program um, really throughout its entire course, from what I understand. He he led me to believe that surely, and we know this, at the dispensary level, the dispensaries want as many patients to be qualified as possible. It's obviously Absolutely. just a monetary thing for them. The more patients that there are, the more product that they'll be able to move, right? Um, so he, his feeling, and this came up in the discussion of the telemedicine aspect of it. For example, I've had a telemedicine practice predating my medical cannabis practice. Um, we decided early on that we were not going to use the telemedicine arm of my practice, which I use kind of for minor urgent care type of problems and to consult in my laser tattoo practice so I can see people's tattoos in Tampa when I'm sitting down here in Venice and give them a good idea of what it's going to take to get rid of the tattoo. But even before right. December 8th, when the state came down with their anti-telemedicine and cannabis opinion, we decided that we were not going to do it that way. Now, as you know, there are other groups in Florida that are very aggressively and still to this day promoting telemedicine care. I'm not quite sure how they're doing that based upon the December 8th opinion that came down from the state because it has not been finalized. But, you know, I guarantee you my attorneys, you know, would surely not be advising me to do that. So I'm kind of fascinated that not only are they doing that, but they're also advertising for the treatment of pain on their sites, which we've already had pain management um, people come at us directly uh, warning us not to do. So it's kind of interesting that we're trying to really follow the high road and do everything exactly as the state wants us to do with a good solid half-hour initial exam and history and the documented EMR uh, chart. Um, I'm not quite sure how other people are doing it, but we want to hold ourselves out as the example of the model for the state and how it should be done clinically. So that's our intention. And, we're, and as I told um, State Senator Brandis yesterday, I want to be an ally, an ally for him and any other legislator um, as a model practice who can come up and speak to the legislators about the type of patients that I'm seeing, the type of problems that are presenting, and quite frankly, the do no, the do no harm concept of the medical cannabis product that quite frankly makes me shake my head at the 29 percenters that just can't understand that there is a more natural product out there that will do no harm that may very well help a lot of people and surely will do no harm. So from the social ill standpoint, it continues to fascinate me that we continue to meet the resistance that we do when the science and the research obviously say otherwise. Plus the mountain of anecdotal evidence from people, which I think has been really helping the movement, is uh, social media engagement. Uh, people sharing their stories, um, yep. and, and it's really, really helped. But, yeah, I don't know what's going on with those 29% either. Uh, we'd probably be better. Well, I mean, it's, got, it's, 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 government, <laughs> it's, government, it's government dogma. And, and literally 100 years of, of, of propaganda and misinformation. And even up to last week when the, you know, DEA made sure that everybody knew that they had reclassified the CBDs themselves as Schedule Ones, that to me was the final straw that me just saying enough, enough, enough. Um, this is nonsense to say that there's no 
legitimate research value in the CBDs at this point is immoral, if not criminal. In this particular 35-year career, physician has had enough. And I'm not going to continue to stand by silently when the research on the CBDs themselves for the conditions that we know they will help um, is still being undertaken by the federal government. It can be nothing but big pharma corruption graft. That's all it can be. No, and I'm, I'm just I'm done with it. I'm, I'm just completely done with it. Yeah, and um, something important to note for once again for everyone listening, uh, there's multiple drugs in the pipeline right now through the FDA. The federal government also has a patent on cannabinoids, so yeah, um, yeah running these out of are all well known. Absolutely, yeah. and, and, and I love and I love the educate the educated nature that you have and the outlook, of course, that you're presenting on the podcast. Um, I want to be available to you and your listeners at any time um, to continue the discussion and the conversation towards making sure that we bring this program to the appropriate fruition that it should. Absolutely. Um, do you have any plans of trying to work maybe um – you were saying with uh, Mr. Bradis, I know he's supposed to be introducing a bill or is working on it. Uh, what about do doing some research with some of the big state universities? Right. Well, you know, as I explain to all the patients and I explain to other people who are listening, the educational aspect is very exciting to the extent that if the cases, as they're supposed to, do go to the University of Florida, College of Pharmacy for research and study, that would be a fantastic thing. And surely on the recommendation sheets that I've seen, it asks for continuation of symptoms and improvement of symptoms and reduction of medicines and things of that nature. If that type of stuff is followed up and the appropriate research is done, that will be fantastic for everybody, of course. Now, if that's actually going to happen or if it's just further hoops, for people to jump through and for the obstructionists to make the program more complicated and difficult, then that's not a good thing. So once again, I think it is based on the spirit of the amendment. The spirit of the amendment calls for research, and let's hope that the spirit of the amendment um, is what happens. Because surely we need more research. The research has been suppressed for 100 years, and it, like I said earlier, is absolutely immoral, if not criminal. And especially when you talk about the knowledge that the FDA has certain patents and this and that, why aren't they being utilized? Um, what's suppressing that research? Where are the dollars uh, coming from that is not allowing for the appropriate care of patients? That's what it's all about, compassionate care of patients. Yeah, that's kind of one of like the um – Maintenance of, of modern health care is the Hippocratic Oath, and uh, you know you, that's what brings you joy. That that's lot, what you know brings the, that's that's what brings the joy to my practice every day is the knowledge that I am doing no harm, that I am preaching the gospel that I've known within my own 35-year emergency medicine career. That surely the cannabinoids have not been the problem um, throughout my emergency medicine career. It's been alcohol, tobacco, the narcotics, the manufactured compounds, the Adderalls, the Lyricas, you know, all those things that, quite frankly, the CBD compounds may have uh, kept some of those things from being even being developed. If the appropriate cannabinoid uh you know, research and things had been done over the past 90 years. It's that, it's that kind of level of immorality that really bothers me because of the development of more artificial substances that, hey, you just need to watch the commercials for medications. They all need to end with the side effect ratio, you know, profiles, which, you know, typically, yes. of course, the worst would be death. So we can surely not get to that I'm with cannabinoids. <laughs> They've never killed anybody, and they never will. Yeah, the the only thing that you could even associate negatively is with the synthetic ca cannabinoids, which have come around as a result of prohibition. Yeah, yeah. the K2 right. and Spice, you're probably seen reports oh. of that. I mean, it's horrible stuff that, that they do, but it's marketed as a, 
they uh, fall prey to. I, I just can't. I just can't imagine who sits up at the top and is able to get up in the morning and shave and know that they're the ones that are overseeing some of these decisions. It's certainly not a life that I want to live. I want to live a life with honor. I want to live a life of service. Um, each Vietnam veteran, for example, that comes in with a diagnosed PTSD from the federal level that can't achieve the appropriate medical cannabis product that they're comfortable with, a guy that fought for those freedoms that just wants to be legal and honest, is a, a guy that I'm going to fight for as hard as I can until this program is put together appropriately. And and that's, that's really big and important, and I just want to be the first to thank you for doing what you're doing and being in the good fight. You know, there's still a lot of lack of information and misinformation out there, so going forward, we're going to continue to bring these topics up. We're going to continue to keep the discussion at the forefront of what we're doing and make sure everyone does understand the benefits. They do understand that there is no harm in using cannabis. Absolutely. And it does help people with many different conditions. Um, no I doubt. And, 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 I wanna, and I want to be there, and I want to be there to assist you guys in every way that I can from the education and advocacy side. That's what we're all about um, in our clinic is patient care first, of course, but also education and advocacy. So as we go forward in this, um, I surely want to participate in further um, interviews and podcasts with you, and I appreciate your Thanks. insight, of course, as well. And I look forward to doing this again uh, at any time that you'd like to in the future, man. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really appreciate everything. It's been a a wealth of information. Um, it, it's really refreshing to know that there's doctors out there like you who really, really do care. Um, we need we need you. We need you in this fight. So keep doing everything you're doing. Um, could you tell us one more time how everybody can contact you? Yeah, the best way to um, find out about our clinic is to go to VeniceCare.com, uh, like the city of Venice. That's where we're located. Um, you can also find us on Facebook at our Compassionate Cannabis Clinic events Facebook page. That's really the best way to um, get a hold of us. You can schedule online. Uh, we also do have a phone number, of course. It's uh, 941. Come on. Uh, try to see phone number. 2426. But online is probably the best way to go. That's where you get all the forms uh, downloaded to you. You can schedule your own appointments. But uh, we're happy to speak with people on the phone, of course, that have questions as well. You know, it's interesting. A lot of our patients, of course, are elderly patients, so they're not quite as computer savvy as um, some others of us are. So surely phone calls are appropriate as well. So feel free to reach out. Um, all the information on the legislative side and action numbers and things of that nature are there. And uh, we look forward to helping those uh, citizens of Florida, 71%, of course, again, who have voted to allow for the appropriate compassionate uh, care program. So feel free to reach out. We're here for you. Excellent. All right, I think that about wraps it up for me. It's Absolutely. Hey, listen, make sure that Patrick, uh, you know, send us a link to the site so we can listen to it and everything, and feel free to stay in touch uh, whenever you'd like. And, and stop in, man, whatever you want. Yeah, absolutely. I sure will. I'm going to get down there shortly. We'll figure it out. Beautiful. I'd love to meet you. I look forward to it, man. I enjoy speaking with you. Yeah, me too. And uh, you have great. a great day, Dr. Gordon. You too. Have a great day, man. You are a well, a well of the Star Wars solution.